And bringing our palms together, resting our chin towards our chest, and taking a few breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And lifting the head, we'll begin our practice by chanting the sound of OM three times, enjoying the vibration of the sound as it moves through the mouth and into the skull. Ah. interlacing fingers. We'll press the palms forward and open up the wrists. Allow the shoulder blades to separate and invite the heart space back. Breathing deeply into the back of the lungs, maybe letting the head fall if that feels right to you. Slowing the breath down and focusing on the fullness of the exhale, clearing the lungs. Inhaling the arms stretching overhead, palms continuing to reach towards the ceiling. We'll open up the armpits and let the shoulders rise up towards the earlobes. Maybe a gentle sway from side to side. And let's keep flowing, right fingertips falling to the earth as we fall a little further towards the right. And pressing off the right hand as we inhale and float up and over. And as the right hand finds the mat, we'll take that left arm up and over and move perhaps that left arm around in a circle or reach it forward and back, whatever feels right to you. Deep breathing here. eventually taking the arms back up and over and finding our way into that right side body, right shoulder, moving the right arm around exactly as it feels right to you.
and eventually arms overhead, we'll touch our fingertips together and drop the hands behind the head, keeping the elbows lifted. And draw those upper arm bones towards the ears, open up the armpits, and just keep letting the weight of the hands fall. Breathing deeply here, opening up the lungs. And as we allow for this attention at the, in the upper spine and the shoulders, we'll also let the pelvis relax, the low back relax, the legs relax. Maybe there's an adjustment in the knees or the ankles that makes sense to you here. And continuing to rest your attention in the ebb and flow of the breath. Perhaps we'll take one hand towards an elbow and just give that upper arm bone a little extra attention and stretch. And take it to the other side when it feels right to you. And then ultimately releasing the arms behind the back, interlacing and fingertips reaching towards the floor behind you. Shoulder blades coming together. Perhaps it feels good to drop the chin towards the chest, focusing the breath in the back of the neck and the shoulders. Deep oceanic breathing here. Releasing the arms to the legs, we'll let the head start to roll from side to side, gently exploring the neck, perhaps inhaling ear to shoulder, exhaling chin to chest. Heavy wrists, heavy elbows, and heavy shoulders. In fact, you might like to relax the shoulders enough to invite their re natural response to the weight of the skull, allowing for a little bit of movement in the top of the spine as the weight of the cranium rolls around, exactly as it feels right to you. Maybe you're ready to explore the back space. Deep oceanic breathing here. We can continue to explore movement as we shift our attention further down from the neck into the shoulders and the upper spine. We might start to allow for more of a Sufi circle, perhaps the impetus for the movement shifts from the head to the heart. Let me just see what that feels like in the body. Moving exactly as it feels right to you. No form 
to think about just this breath, this body, this moment. Noticing the pelvis and the way that it responds to the movement in the upper spine. <clears throat> Perhaps you'll close your eyes and allow your gaze to rest at the third eye. Soft in the forehead, the eyebrows, the eyeballs. Maybe a reversal in the direction of your movement, if that makes sense to you. And we can invite our movement to spiral back toward a neutral spine at your own pace. The movement becoming more subtle until you feel something like stillness. And pausing to observe the sensations in the body. when it feels right to you. Begin to shift toward some cat cows. Maybe you'll enjoy beginning your cat cows in a seated position and then transitioning to hands and knees at your own pace. <clears throat> Allowing for some support underneath the knees. and aligning hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Let's take some time to wake up the fingers and the feet, tucking the toes on the in-breath, pressing towards the tops of the feet on the out-breath. Allowing for some more freedom of exploration, 
Maybe it feels good to shift weight in the hips from side to side or around in a circle. Maybe dropping hips back towards heels and then bringing them around towards the wrists. Allowing for whatever variation of movement feels delicious to you in this moment. Resting your attention in this breath, this body, this moment. You might choose to move the hands around so open up the wrists, rotating towards the backs of the hands one at a time. You like, might like moving the fingers in different directions. <clears throat> Exploring exactly as it feels right to you. Ultimately, we can walk our hands towards our hips, coming up onto the knees for camel pose. <clears throat> Allowing for that action downward through the leg bones, maybe even tucking the toes if that feels more uh, connected for you. Hands behind the hips or behind the legs. We might even choose to use blocks on either side of the leg bones. Finding that arrangement for you that allows the shoulders to drop, the heart space to rise, the gaze remains forward so that the neck is aligned and spacious. Downward action through the legs, tailbone falling, heart space rising. Breathing deeply here. <clears throat> As we drop the chin towards the chest, we are employing Jalandhara Bandha, a seal to contain the energy that we're cultivating around the heart space. Soft in the face, the jaw, the tongue, the eyebrows, the forehead, the scalp. Focusing on the ebb and flow of the breath. On an inhale, we'll come up and over, making our way toward a puppy pose. So maybe you'll support your forehead, slide the hands forward, let the toes tuck and align the tail over the knees, taking some time to stretch out the spine here. If you have a bolster, you might slide it underneath the forehead so that it captures the elbows along with the forehead. Breathing deeply here, taking time to explore the fullness of the breath once again. Relaxing the shoulders and filling the armpits with your breath.
taking your time, we'll walk our hands back up under the shoulders and let's find our thread the needle twist now. Inhaling, the left arm reaches open. We're going to take an extra breath here with the left knee rooting down into the earth. Maybe we're up on the right fingertip, spacious in the right shoulder. And when you're ready, exhaling to scoop the left arm under. I like to use a prop under my head to give some space and support. Maybe that feels good to you, maybe not. Allow for whatever variation of this thread the needle pose feels good to you. Activating down through the right hand to lift the elbow and draw the right shoulder back. Possibly rooting down through the left arm and reaching the right arm to the sky or letting it fall behind the back. Inviting the stacking of the shoulders, the stacking of the lungs, the pelvis relax, the tailbone high. Maybe we're tucking our toes and feeling a little bit more grounded that way. Left ear dropping towards the earth, breathing deeply into the space between the shoulder blades, working with any variation that feels satisfying to you. Transitioning when you're feeling ready, the right hand roots back down to the mat, the left arm reaches back open with a big breath in, and we exhale to return to neutral. Pause for a moment, maybe a few cat cows, some gentle releasing movement in the spine, and when you're ready, we'll take the right arm to the sky, moving at your own pace. On an exhale, rooting the right arm down, scooping under, dropping the right ear, perhaps using support and stabilizing with the feet, if you like. Activating into that left hand, directing the left shoulder over the right. Breathing deeply here. Pelvis stacked over the knees, right ear dropping, melting the space between the shoulder blades. Breathing deeply in and out through the nose, but allowing for the breath to fall from the mouth if it feels satisfying for you. Maybe we're rooting down into the back of the right arm so that the left arm can reach to the sky. Maybe the left arm is falling behind the back. When it feels complete for you, transitioning slowly, opening the right arm to the sky as we keep the right knee grounded. 
Returning to all fours, once again, inviting whatever neutralizing movement feels natural for you. We'll make our way towards a downward facing dog at your own pace. Taking your time here, let's invite movement as we approach our down dog. We'll invite lots of shifting of weight in the feet and the hips. Knees are bent, head is heavy. Allowing for the arm bones to lengthen and even more action in the fingers. Breathing deeply, we'll invite the belly button to pull towards the back of the spine with each exhale. Perhaps inviting a few breaths in stillness, long arms, spreading the fingers wide, opening the armpits, sinking the heels, floating the tail. So we're gonna take a three-legged dog flow here, inhaling the right leg bends and the heel presses up and away from the body. Exhaling, we're swinging the right foot forward, dropping the left heel, and rising up on the in-breath to warrior one. Exhaling, we'll open to warrior two. Inhale, reversing the warrior. And exhaling, reaching back to our downward facing dog. Inhaling, reaching the left heel up and away. Exhaling, swinging it through, rooting the right heel downward and inhaling to warrior one. Exhaling as we open to warrior two and inhaling, reversing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Continuing to flow. Inhale, right leg reaches. Exhale, swinging through. Inhale, rising to warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale to reverse. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg reaches away. Exhale, swinging through. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale to reverse. Exhale, downward dog. One more set if you're feeling up to it. If not, rest in a child pose or a downward dog. Taking a few more breaths in this downward facing dog, let's pedal through the feet and then start to tiptoe our feet forward on the mat. So articulating the feet, spreading the toes, working with the ankles, making your way slowly towards your hands. And then bending the knees, we're gonna draw the arms around the backs of the legs and give ourselves a big hug. Shake out the head, rest the belly to the thighs, active feet, spreading the toes, breathing deeply into the backside of the body.
releasing the head and neck. We're going to take a breath or two here, placing the fingertips in front of the shin bones and lengthening the spine in our Ardha Uttanasana pose. Flat back, halfway up. So take another breath or two, draw the shoulders away from the ears and the heart even further forward. Exhaling, we'll release back down. Forward folding Uttanasana. Twice more now, inhale to press away. Ardha, exhale Uttanasana. Inhale to press away. And exhale, folding forward. Let's dangle the arms, dangle the head, bend the knees, and start to roll up slowly. Pull the belly button towards the spine. Enjoy the articulation of the spine and gradually come to stand. Arms coming overhead now. Standing tall, we're going to take a few breaths in our Utita Tadasana. Heels dropping, fingers reaching, tailbone dropping, heart space high. On the next inhale, push into the feet and bend the knees, drawing the pelvis back. Utkatasana. On an exhale, we're going to twist palms to the heart, left elbow towards the right knee. Inhale, returning to Utkatasana. Exhale, right elbow comes towards left knee. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, left elbow towards right knee. One more time. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, twisting right elbow towards left knee. Coming back to Utkatasana and exhale, swan diving forward over the legs. Inhale to press away, flat back position. And exhale, stepping back to a plank. Inhaling here in plank position. Heels reaching back, inner thighs rising, heart pulls forward, shoulders draw back. On an exhale, we're bending knees and elbows, chaturanga. The heart space comes forward as we bend the elbows towards the body. Inhale, rolling to your upward facing dog. The arm bones lengthen and stack. The heart rolls high. Exhaling, pressing back to our downward facing dog. On an in breath. We'll press the right heel away in our three-legged dog again. Exhaling, swinging through. Inhaling, left heel turns, warrior one. So we're gonna exhale here and find humble warrior. Pushing into the back heel, long back leg. Shifting back up on the in-breath to warrior one. Flowing freely. Exhale to humble. Inhale to warrior one. Exhale to humble. Inhale to warrior one. One more time. Exhale to humble. Inhale to warrior one. On an exhale, opening to warrior two. Drawing the left side body back and arranging the left toe open, dropping the tailbone. Let's flow again. Inhale to reverse the warrior on. Exhale, right foot pressing, right leg lengthening, and we tilt the tailbone to the back heel. Inhale, reversing the warrior, tailbone dropping. Exhale, tailbone pulling back, spine extending. Moving at your own breath's pace. The arms are long, our wingspan extended. When you're ready, take an extra breath in that reverse warrior 
and then place the right forearm on the right thigh. Bring the left arm through Utita Parshvokanasana. The palms are open, the fingers are together and extended. The heart space is rolling up and away from the right hand. The right shoulder is spacious. The side bodies are long. The feet are equally active, the right knee stacked over the right ankle. Allow for any variations of this pose that feel satisfying to you. Maybe the top arm falls behind the back or finding a bind. Don't forget to breathe. You may be interested here in lengthening the right leg and shifting back to Trikonasana, perhaps with a bind or perhaps opening the arms, taking a few breaths in triangle pose here. Making our way to Ardha Chandrasana. We'll bend the right knee and possibly grab a block for the right hand. Your block and hand will land about a foot in front of your right pinky toe. As we root into the right big toe, the right inner thigh rises and the left arm reaches to the sky. The left heel is flexing and we're lifting the pelvis off of that right femur. Taking an extra breath or two here, feel free to play with any variations of the pose like Ardha Chapa Chandrasana. And we'll land in warrior two, arms extending, feet pressing, tailbone dropping. Inhale, reverse, and exhale, reaching back to our downward facing dog. Go ahead and pedal it out here, shifting weight into the hips, releasing exactly as it feels right to you. Let's drop the knees to the mat and pause to rest in Ustrasana. We'll come back to this heart opening pose, dropping the tailbone, dropping the shoulders, dropping the chin, floating the heart space. Relaxed in the face, the forehead, the eyebrows, the scalp. Continuing to rest your attention in the ebb and flow of the breath. On an in-breath, we're coming up and over and exhaling, sliding back to our downward facing dog. Let's take it to the other side. Left leg reaching up and away on the in-breath. Exhale, swinging through. Right heel turns, inhaling, warrior one. We'll flow, exhaling, humble warrior. Inhale, warrior one. Exhaling, humble warrior. Inhaling, warrior one. Exhaling, humble warrior. Inhaling, warrior one. Exhale to open, warrior two. Adjusting the right toes, drawing right side body back. Our gaze is fixed past the left fingers. And we'll keep looking past the left fingers as we flow. Left arm reaching up, reversing the warrior. Exhale, swinging to Trikonasana. Here the gaze can switch to the right hand. Inhale, looking at the left hand. Exhale to the right hand. 
moving at your own breath's pace. Strong action in the feet, lifting the inner thighs, stretching through your extended arms, active fingers. We can land in our reverse warrior, lengthening that left side body and then bending the left elbow and shifting to our Utita Parshva Konasana, extended side angle. We're reaching as far as we can through the right fingers and we're pushing into the earth with the right heel, long back leg pelvis adjusting, tail towards the back heel, heart space rolling high, lifting up and out of the left shoulder, lifting up and away from that left thigh. The right arm keeps reaching. Maybe we'll choose to drop the arm behind the back or work with a bind. Stay equally active in both feet, pushing strongly downward. Checking in with the toes. Don't forget to breathe. Lengthening the left leg and extending to Trikhanasana allowing for a slow transition and a few more breaths here, exploring that sense of expansion. Long legs, long arms, long spine. Notice your neck. When you're ready, transitioning to Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Our left hand might come to a block. It's going to land about a foot in front of the left pinky toe. And as we shift weight into the left leg, we're pushing down through the left big toe and lifting up through the left inner thigh. Equal energy out through the right heel, up through the right fingertips. Finding whatever variation of this pose works for you, you might enjoy playing with Ardha Chapa Chandrasana. And ultimately transitioning back to Warrior Two. Inhaling, reversing the warrior, Exhaling, downward facing dog. Take a few breaths again, pedaling it out, shifting weight, dropping the skull, releasing the neck. And as you're ready, we're gonna once again, take that right leg up and away. Here we can bend the knee and roll the pelvis open if you like. You might even play with rolling all the way open, flipping your dog, finding wild thing. And ultimately, we're going to take that right knee through, shifting into Kapotasana Pigeon. Right knee towards the right wrist. Let's bring in some support. I highly recommend props underneath the right hip, underneath the heart. Stabilizing the body so that you can surrender completely. Resting pigeon. Breathing deeply here. I really feel that it's valuable to fill space on the left side of the body. We have this right leg that we're dropping over, but the left side tends to feel like there's space underneath us. So filling that space with a pillow, a bolster, or even a block can be very satisfying. Stabilizing the skull, 
so that the shoulders can relax, the elbows, the wrists falling to gravity. Breathing deeply here, resting even more heavily to the earth with each exhale. Deep oceanic breathing. Gently rocking the forehead onto your prop or the earth. Consider walking the hands slowly back up towards the body, lifting the heart and dropping the shoulders. Maybe the hands are out to the sides or slightly forward. We can take some time here to just relax in the front of that left hip. Heart space rising. And ultimately inviting the left leg around towards the front for Janyu Shirsasana. Shifting towards the right hip as you release the left leg from behind and reset. Here you might like to prop underneath that right knee. Extending the left leg straight forward, toes high. We'll reach the arms overhead and perhaps even take a moment to lean back just slightly as our core engages. And we take the whole torso forward as we exhale. You might like to flow in and out of the pose, inhaling as you rise, exhaling as you extend forward. You might prefer to stay in a stiller position. Taking just a couple more breaths here in your forward fold. Coming slowly up to neutral in the spine. Let's cross the sole of the right foot over the left knee and give that right knee a hug rotating in Marichi Asana. Maybe you'll choose to bend the bottom knee, whatever variation makes sense to you. We wanna make sure that the sit bones are grounded and the spine is aligned. Inhaling to elongate exhaling to rotate. And 
taking your time here. When it feels complete for you, unwinding, releasing the legs, walking them back, the hands forward, and taking some time in your downward facing dog again, stretching it out, pedaling into those ankles and calves, and in your own timing, shifting to pigeon with your left leg, rising to a three-legged dog, perhaps bending and rolling open as you like, and ultimately swinging that left knee through, writhing in Kapotasana, drawing support underneath the spaces that need to be filled and guiding the heart space forward and the skull to a state of surrender. Heavy elbows, heavy wrists, heavy skull. The back leg is long and heavy. We might even think about rotating the right toes towards the midline, making effort to neutralize that back leg. Breathing deeply here. How can I let go even more with this exhale, dropping the weight of the bones? Continuing to breathe ever more deeply as it feels right to you. Start to walk your hands towards the hips, keeping the arms lengthened, the shoulders away from the ears and the heart space rising. Inviting the front of that right hip to melt forward. Breathing deeply into the pelvic bowl. Shifting to Janusasana, we'll lean to the left and allow that right leg to come around, adjusting and perhaps supporting that left knee as it falls open, inhaling to extend and exhaling to reach forward. Engaging the abdomen strongly with each exhale flowing or resting in stillness as you prefer. Just a couple more breaths here.
rolling up and transitioning to your twist. Left foot finds a flat position, perhaps crossing the right knee. Maybe we'll bend that left, right leg and we'll twist towards the left knee. Sit bones grounded, taking whatever bind makes sense to you and checking in with the neck. Heart space high, breathing deeply. Just another couple breaths here. Using the left hand behind you as a point of leverage to lift the heart a little higher. And when it feels complete for you, releasing here. We'll take both knees bent, soles of the feet flat and we're gonna roll down through the spine, making our way onto our backs and into an inversion of your choice. Maybe you're comfortable simply placing the legs up in the air. Maybe you'd like to use a prop under your pelvis, like a block or a bolster. Maybe you're interested in comfortable working with shoulder stand, in which case you might like to make an adjustment to put a, a blanket underneath your upper back. Having the blanket aligned at the tops of your shoulders invites more spaciousness for the cervical spine, so there's no compression there. Toes flaring, ankles squeezing, leg bones lengthening, pelvis over the heart, knees over the pelvis. Enjoying this physiological reversal of gravity and recognizing how important it is to get upside down for those legs, but also reminding ourselves that the yogis codified this pose with an energetic intention of letting the heart space, the honey of the heart drip toward the brain. There may be variations within the pose that appeal to you, like halasana, dropping toes overhead. Continuing to observe the nature of the breath. rolling through the spine will land in happy baby, allowing this pose to be a little counter for our inversion. We're going to focus first on dropping those shoulders away from the ears, turning the head gently from side to side, releasing the neck and inviting the tailbone to fall, perhaps taking a little freedom in our Happy baby pose, less form, more feel. Mm. 
And gathering knees to chest and taking the left leg long, we'll hold the right knee in, in Apanasana. And when you're ready, guiding the right knee across for a supine twist. And exhaling, we'll gather the knees back towards the chest and release the right leg long and heavy. Pausing here for a breath or two and when you're ready, guiding the knee across to twist. Breathing into that left lung, left shoulder, left hip. Relaxing the groins, especially the right side of the body, settling to the earth. And when it feels complete for you, exhaling back to a neutral position, hugging the knees and allowing perhaps for a few breaths, working with our windshield wiper motion, giving those hips and quadriceps a little bit of release. And just listening to the body here, allowing for whatever variations or movements your body is craving as it prepares for Shavasana, allowing for a graceful and efficient transition into a pose of surrender. <clears throat> you may be happy to just starfish out where you are. You may like the idea of propping your legs up onto a chair or a couch that's nearby, allowing the knees to align over the hips. You may be interested in wrapping the knees, covering the eyes, whatever makes sense to you as you compassionately and lovingly transition into our most important pose of our practice. Here we practice the art of letting go completely. Dropping all of the machinations, dropping our urge to control and surrendering to the spaciousness that we've cultivated in our integration of body, mind, and breath. Resting in the space of pure potential. <clears throat> 